Components of a removable partial denture in prosthodontics. A removable partial denture will have some of the following components, I major connector 2 minor connector 3 rests 4 direct retainers, clasps, 5 indirect retainers 6 1 or more denture bases and replacement teeth. I major connectors The major connector connects the parts of the prosthesis located on one side of the arch with those on the opposite side. All other parts of the partial denture are attached to it either directly or indirectly. 4. Requirements of major connectors One must be rigid to transmit stresses of mastication from one side of the arch to the other. 2. Must be properly located in relation to gingival and movable soft tissues. 3. Must not impinge on the gingival margin. 4. Provide an opportunity of positioning denture bases where needed. 5. Maintain patient's comfort by covering little tissues, avoid food trap and avoid bony and soft tissue prominence during insertion and removal. 5. Maxillary major connectors design specifications, i. The borders are placed a minimum of 6 mm from gingival margins or are positioned on the lingual surfaces of the teeth. 2. Relief is normally not required under the major connector. 3. The posterior palatal bar or strap should be located as far posteriorly as possible without contacting the movable soft palate. 4. All borders should taper slightly towards the soft tissue. 5. Both anterior and posterior borders should cross the midline at right angles, never diagonally. 6. The thickness of the metal should be uniform throughout the palate. 6. 7. The finished borders of the metal should be gently curved, never angular. 8. The metal should be smooth but not highly polished on the tissue side. To avoid delete fine details, 9. All borders on the soft tissue should be beaded with a bead fading out near the gingival margin of the teeth. 7. Types of maxillary major connectors The term bar is used whenever the anteroposterior width of the major connector is less than 8 mm. If the anteroposterior width of the major connector is in the 8 to 12 mm range the term strap is applied. When more than 12 mm is covered the term palatal plate is used. If the entire palate is covered, the term complete palatal plate is used. 8. The following types of maxillary major connectors are used, one single palatal bar two anteroposterior, or double, palatal bar, three single palatal strap, four horseshoe, or U-shaped connector five closed horseshoe or anteroposterior palatal strap, six complete palatal plate, nine one single palatal bar indications, in tooth-borne partial denture when second premolars and or first molars are missing. Design, I it is a narrow half oval with its thickest point at the center. 2 it is gently curved and should not form a sharp angle at the junction with the denture base. 3 it should not be placed further anterior to the second premolar. This position is favorable for the tongue action. Disadvantages, L for a single bar to maintain any degree of rigidity it should be bulky, less acceptable by the patient, 2 it drives little support from the bony palate because it's narrow anteroposterior with 3 its use is limited to replace one or two teeth on each side of the arc. 10. 2 anteroposterior palatal bar indications, 1 it can be used in any class especially when the anterior and posterior abutments are widely separated. 2. When a patient objects a large amount of palatal coverage. 3. In patients with large palatal torus. Design, 1. The anterior bar is flat but narrower than the palatal strap. 2. The posterior bar is half oval similar to the single bar but less bulky. 3. The two bars are joined by flat longitudinal bars on each side palate. 11. Advantages. 1. It is rigid because it lies at different planes. 2. It offers little tissue coverage. Disadvantages, the anteroposterior bars should not be considered as the first choice because of the following disadvantages, 1. Provides little support from the palate. 2. The anterior bar covers the rugae area and may interfere with phonetics and patient's comfort. 
3. Because the bars are narrow, extra bulk is required for rigidity. 12. Anteroposterior palatal bar. 13. Three single palatal strap indications, one in most maxillary tooth borne partial dentures when posterior teeth are missing. Two in tooth mucosa borne partial dentures when the extension base is short. Design, I it consists of a wide, thin band of metal that crosses the palate. Its anterior border should be posterior to the rugae area and the posterior border should terminate short of the junction of the hard and soft palate. Two anteroposterior width is within the 8i 2mm range. Advantages, one rigid because it is wide and located in different planes. Two it increases patient comfort because it is thin. 3. It provides support to the partial denture since it covers a relatively large area of the palate. Disadvantages, the patient may complain from excessive palatal coverage. 14. Single palatal strap. 15. For horseshoe or U-shaped connector indication, 1. When several anterior teeth are being replaced. 2 in tooth borne partial dentures with anterior and posterior teeth are missing. 3 when a hard midline suture or palatal torus cannot be covered. 16. Design, I it consists of U-shaped thin band of metal of 6 to 8 mm in width. 2 the borders must be either 6 mm away from the gingival margin or extend onto the lingual surfaces of the teeth. 3. The connector should be uniform in thickness, symmetric, and with curved and smooth borders advantages. 1. It solves the problem of missing anterior teeth especially when there is deep anterior vertical overlap. 2. It offers a definite advantage in the presence of hard median suture or large torus. Disadvantages. I tends to be less rigid than other connectors as a buccio-lingual movement may occur in the posterior area. 2. It covers the rugae area and interferes with phonetics and patient's comfort. 17. V. Anteroposterior palatal strap, closed horseshoe, indications, 1. In tooth borne, and mucosa borne partial dentures when replacement of anterior and posterior teeth is required to when a palatal torus exists. 18. Design. 1. The anterior strap should be positioned as back as possible on the rugae area. 2. The posterior strap should be placed as far back as possible on the hard palate. 3. The borders of the connector should be placed 6 mm away from the gingival margins or should extend above the height of contour of the teeth. Advantages I. It is rigid because it lies at two different planes. 2. LT provide good support to the partial denture. Disadvantages may be not accepted by some patients due to multiple borders and coverage to the rugae area. 19. 6. The complete palatal plate indications, 1. In long span bilateral tooth mucosa borne partial denture with and without anterior teeth replacement. 2. Should be used whenever maximum tissue support is desired. 3. LN patients with palatal defects. 4. Maximum palatal coverage should be considered in the presence of poor residual ridge, periodontal disease, increased muscular force and poor bone indices. 5. In transitional partial denture. 20. Design. 1. The anterior border should be 6 mm away from the gingival margin. 2. Posterior borders are extended to the junction of movable and immovable soft palate. 3. The posterior border is beaded to prevent debris from collecting beneath the plate. 21. Advantages 1. It offers maximum rigidity support and retention to the partial denture. 2. It is made in a uniform thin metal plate, which reproduce anatomic contour of the palate and feel natural to the patient. Disadvantages 1. Often cannot be used in the presence of a palatal torus. 2. Complete palatal coverage may alter taste and tactile sensation. 22. Types of palatal plates I complete cast metal plate covering the entire palate. It may not be relined easily. 2. Complete resin plate, which can be relined or rebused. 3. Combination of anterior metal with posterior resin area. 
the resin area may be relined or rebused. 23. Palatal plate. 24. Mandibular major connectors design specifications, 1. The superior borders are placed at least 3 mm from the gingival margins. Where a 3 mm distance from the gingival margins cannot be obtained the metal should extend onto the cingula of anterior teeth or onto the lingual surfaces of the posterior teeth. 2. The inferior border should not interfere with the soft tissue movement of the floor of the mouth. 3. Relief of the tissue surface of the major connector is required to prevent tissue impingement at rest or during function. 4. The metal should be highly polished on the tissue side to minimize plaque accumulation. 25. Types of mandibular major connectors 1. Lingual bar 2. Sublingual bar 3. Double lingual bar 4. Lingual plate V. Labial bar 26. Ilingual bar indication, it is the first choice major connector, should be used whenever the functional depth of the lingual vestibule equal or exceed 8 mm. Design, L the bar should be half pear shaped in cross section. Superior inferior dimension is 5 mm, and it is 2 mm in thickness. 2 The superior border of the bar should be located at least 3 mm from the gingival margins of all adjacent teeth. 3. The inferior border may be placed at the functional depth of the lingual vestibule. 4. Relief of the tissue surface of the bar major connector is necessary. 27. Advanlagas, 1. The simplest mandibular major connector with highest patient acceptance. 2. LT does not cover the teeth or the gingival tissues. Disadvantages, if it is not properly designed it may not be rigid. 28. Two sublingual bar indications, when the lingual bar cannot be used because of a lack of functional depth of the lingual vestibule, depth of 5 to 7 mm. Design, 1. The sublingual bar is essentially a lingual bar rotated 45 degrees. 2. The superior border of the bar should be located at least 3 mm from the gingival margins of all adjacent teeth. Advantages, 1. It does not covers the teeth or tissues. 2. More rigid than a lingual bar in the horizontal plane. Disadvantages, a functional impression of the vestibule is required to accurately register the position and contour of the vestibule. 29. Sublingual bar. 30. 3. The double lingual bar indications, 1. When indirect retention is required. 2. When periodontally affected teeth that require splinting are present. Design, 1. It is made of two bars, cingulum bar, Kennedy bar, and the conventional lingual bar. A rigid minor connector at the embrasure between the canine and first premolars joins the two bars. Rests are placed at each end of the upper bar attached to the minor connector 2. The lower bar has the same design as a single lingual bar 3. The upper bar is scalloped and half oval in cross section, 2 to 3 mm high, and 1 mm thick at its greatest diameter. Advantages, 1 provides indirect retention. 2 contributes to horizontal stabilization. 3 no gingival margin coverage. Disadvantages, eye tongue annoyance. 2 food impaction if the upper bar is not in intimate contact with the teeth. 31. Lingual bar with continuous bar, cingulum bar. 32. Lingual bar with continuous bar, cingulum bar. 33. Four lingual plate indications, one when the functional depth of the lingual vestibule, less than 5 mm, is not enough for bar placement, two when future loss of natural teeth is anticipated to facilitate addition of artificial teeth to the partial denture. 3. When splinting of anterior teeth is required. 4. When lingual tori are present. 34. Design, 
One it consists of a pear-shaped lingual bar with a thin metal extending upward from the superior border of the bar onto the lingual surfaces of the teeth above the cingula and survey lines 2LN extension base partial denture The lingual plates should have a rest on each side to prevent labial movement of the teeth. 3 There should be adequate blockout and relief of the soft tissue undercuts, undercuts in the proximal areas of the teeth, the free gingival margins and the pear-shaped bar. 35. Advantages, 1. The most rigid mandibular major connector. 2. It gives indirect retention to the partial denture. 3. Deflect food from impacting on lingual tissues. 4. Provide resistance against horizontal or lateral forces. 5. Permits the replacement of lost tooth without remaking the partial denture. 6. Help in splinting and prevent super eruption of the anterior teeth. Disadvantages, covers more tooth and gingival tissues than other mandibular major connectors. 36. Interrupted lingua plate in presence of interproximal space. 37. Interrupted lingua plate in presence of interproximal space. 38. Vilabial bar indications, 1. When the mandibular teeth are so severely inclined lingually as to prevent the use of lingual major connector. 2. When large lingual tori exist and their removal is contraindicated. Design, 1. It is a half pear shaped bar, runs across the mucosa labial to the anterior teeth. 2. Labial vestibule should be adequate to allow the superior border to be placed at least 3 mm below the free gingival margins. 3. Relief eyes required beneath the bar. Advantages, it solves the problem of severely inclined teeth and avoids surgical intervention to remove a large torus. Disadvantages, 1. It tends to lack rigidity since it is considerably longer than a lingual bar. 2. The least comfortable mandibular major connector. 39. Labial bar. 40. Minor connectors definition. A minor connector is a rigid component that links the major connector or base and other components of the partial denture such as rests, indirect retainers, and clasps. 41. Functions, 1. Transmit forces to the abutment teeth. 2. Transfer the effect of retainers, rests and stabilizing components to the rest of the denture. Design specifications, 1. Should have sufficient thickness for rigidity. 2. Should exhibit minimal gingival coverage, the lingual minor connector should cross the gingival margins directly, joining the major connector at rounded right angle, 3. Slight relief is required when crossing the gingival margin especially in tooth mucosa borne dentures. 4. Should be highly polished to minimize plaque accumulation. 5. Should be located at least 5 mm from other vertical components. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it give like and subscribe. Thanks.